Hello, Dr. Mike here for CIS 1107 Introduction to Operating Systems. And this would be topic six, uh, supporting and troubleshooting Windows. This is chapter six, currently at the time of this recording, chapter six in the textbook. And we will, um, as usual, I will look over just what I think is some important aspects. So I'll skip over some of the items and show you a live demo of some important uh, tasks you'll need to know for completing the lab and just having some general knowledge of how to handle uh, Windows registries. So first off, what is a registry? Um, it is a database of everything. It's sort of like a flat file database. Um, as you can see, user preferences, install applications. So example, when you open a window and, and uh, let's say text uh, notepad, it's a certain size and you close it and you open it again, it's back in the same size, things like that. Your background, install applications, there's a lot of OS components inside there. So since we have the Windows kernel in place uh, that handles the actual sort of the calls to and from the OS, uh, from applications, users, uh, of course jobs and uh, memory management, things like that, it needs a place to, to sort of record that. And that's what this is. So. It is a database of that. Uh, what changes it? Anything. Um, you install a new device. You turn Windows on. Every time it starts up, it records inside there. Startup times. Any changes you make, apps you make changes to, apps you installed, any preferences you make, your background color, things like that, your wallpaper. So, the registry files. Now, before we look at the files themselves, let's talk about how they're laid out. And what we have is um, sort of a, it's a flat file structure, and I'll show you where those are at, and we'll look at them, uh, but understand how they work inside too. So uh, first off, the files themselves are hidden, but inside of each one of these files is sort of a structure like this. So we have what's referred to as a hive, and underneath that we have a file referred to as a key, That's Hive. So, and then those can have a sub key. My job of doing this without my pen. <laughs> and then, of course, with this here, we actually have a value attached to it. So again, these each one of these files you see listed listen listen in a single directory except for one. And uh, we'll call that one out. It's that dot dat file you see on the slide there. We'll call that separately. Uh, at least we'll talk about it in the um, in the slide deck. But we'll look at the files contained in this location here. And this is what we see underneath it. So first off, where these files are at. Let's see. Let's look at the slide deck, and then uh, we'll come back and do some demo here. Uh, so what they are. Uh, BCD default user dat. This is that file that is actually. Um, usually in um, our users themselves, and there's actually a default one too. So when your system first comes on, there's a default user that needs to load some basics from a registry. It's going to pull from that default. And then when the current user logs in, it's going to pull from there into user.dat, and then of course it's going to source the rest of the registry as needed. So some things are actually in into user.dat that are specific to the user. And some stuff you see here is system software security is located in a central location. So that location. So you see it here on the slide, but let's actually look at it. So first off, let's talk about the tools we're going to use. So I am here in Windows 10. Uh, I clicked on the search here and I type in um, regedit. So R-E-G-E-D-I-T. You can see I get a app up here, regedit.msc. I click on that. I do get the normal UAC, uh, user account control. Do you want to allow us to make changes? Yes, I do. Now, if you're, ad, if you're not an admin user, I think you can launch this, but you can't see anything or make any changes. Um, so... Uh, but if you're an admin user, you can have, of course, a full administrator rights. You can launch this and you can make changes. So, so again, first off, this is regedit. And uh, this is how we're going to look at the registry files. Now, where these files are at. So let's go and look at our explorer. 
and you need to make a change to your explorer to see these. It's probably, it's probably a good idea to do this. Uh, go to your view tab, options. We're going to change our search options here. We're going to show hidden files, folders, and drives. So just in case we need it, I don't know if we need it for these or not, um, but we'll just have it on. So we'll go to this PC, your C drive, Windows, and we'll see down here it is System32. And here is a config directory. You know, else you'll get a you sure want to look at this? In this case, I can't continue to see it. Uh, if I was not an administrator, I would be locked out of this. Here we can see those files. So again, this is where they're at. Um, you're not going to actually do anything. I don't suggest do anything in here at all through this file browser app. Don't copy stuff. Don't try to right-click and open. Just leave these as they are. I mean, you can right-click and see the properties of them if you like. Uh, you can see the size of the registry. Uh, permissions and so on if you want to but uh, just be aware of where these are at and this is exactly in this in this exact location system C Windows system 32 it's really the heart of a lot of your Windows configuration information and configure settings things like drivers um, diagnostic information and so on so I mean just be aware this is where they're at C Windows system 32 config and how you can find them now again, to actually work with these, you're going to use RegEdit, which we just launched a second ago. So a quick tour of RegEdit here. So here we can see um, each of these hives. And you think, well, was there much there? Again, you would click and open these up, and they get much bigger. So um, and we'll actually dig into these here. System RNG, for example. So. We can see now uh, we have the uh, our hive, we have our key, our subkey, and then we have the values of subkey. Hence, uh, this would be the subkey value of seed, and then it is a type, which we'll see here. Uh, I talked about it already. Regedit, regedit. <laughs> there you go. And you can see the active key I have here, the subkeys, and the actual values for these subkeys here. So this this uh, subkey here, this active key here, has of course these three values, and they have a type assigned to them. There we go. So we can have actual raw binary. We have basically binary, which is raw binary binary data, and this is actually represented not in uh, as you would see here. Let's actually open this up here. Uh, this is actually is represented in hexadecimal. So anything time we deal with binary, you're not going to see the ones and zeros. Those have been ro rolled up into hexadecimal here. So we'll come back to this in a second. Uh, D word, basically a 32 bit integer. And we have uh, expanded or longer versions of those two. Um, so I'll have, if you have 32 bit support, sometimes you need to have a D word for that. Um, we have text, we have multi-SZ, expanded, multiple, and SZ, basically human text in different types of formats. So, um, so again, description of that. Now, before we delve into this, you think you might ask yourself, so why, why would you need into this? To be honest, the, the only time you need to get inside here is to make um, system changes. And most of the time, you should be given some sort of form of instructions, uh, let's say from a software provider. I know I had a student mentioned um, they worked at a place where they had special printers that unless they went into registry and made a certain change, uh, the printer would not work or a certain function the printer would not work. Uh, I, had a, I had a, for a while, I had some uh, different keyboard, I think it was a mechanical keyboard on my gaming Windows 10 system and uh, the print screen wouldn't work. So I had to make a reg change to change the print screen or turn it on. It was, and they had that listed on the keyboard provider website. It's actually a pretty bad keyboard, I think about it. <laughs> but in any case, you just don't usually go in here and just browse around and change things. Uh, you usually should have some sort of instructions in play. And before we talk about making changes, let's talk about this actual view here, the reg editor. 
pretty standard, right? Again, you, we see our path here of our registry key, you know, our hive, our key, our sub key, and the values all listed out here, nice and neat. Um, file, edit, view, favorites, there's a help. There you go, a lot of help there, that was. Um, you can make favorites, I guess, if you really, or if a very bored one day, you can add make favorites. Uh, view, but let's go look at the file here. File, import, export, connect to network registry, print and exit. So, and edit, modify, modify binary tree, <clears throat> new permissions and so on. If you notice here, there's no save and there's no undo. So as you would see like Microsoft Word or any, most apps, file save, edit undo. That's to tell you that every time you make a change in this, it is done automatically and there's no undo for it. So before you go into making any changes, you need to learn how to make a backup. So, so let's go ahead and walk through a backup real quick. Now, how can we back up registry? So first off, you can back up an actual key. Now again, you can click on a key, a sub key here. Um, and I can do uh, file export. And you see I can do all or the selected branch. In this case, our hive and our um, key and our sub key, which is RNG. Or you can right click on it and say export. So let's put that on the desktop. We'll call this um, rng.bck, save, pretty quick. You can see by the properties, it's single key itself is very small, 740 bytes. Um, if you want to though, you can file, export, everything. Full bck, we'll call it, full backup, dot reg. So, now that might take a minute. Um, see my cursor there spinning. All right, there we go. So if I look at properties, it's about 219 megabytes. So not very big in today's <laughs> file sizes, but um, that is your entire registry. Now there are other ways to do this too, but um, probably the most handy way is to do a single key change. No, I'm sorry, export or backup. Reason why is, so let's say I have a document that does not tell me to do this, I should do this first. Let's say I have a document that says, you know, I need to change my, my seed for my RNG. By the way, this is a random number generator used for um, making random numbers, and the seed is just, uh, should be a, basically a group of randomness it can pull from. So I'm gonna change this, uh, let's change it from 52 to 00. zero. There you go, done. Um, close that, you know, it's, it's all done. Now, let's go ahead and restore that. So again, if I type in regedit here, let me go back, you can see um, it's already there. It's still zero, zero. So we're gonna close this. If I wanna restore it, I just double click on this. Do I wanna allow us to make changes? Yes. And this is gonna let me inform me that Unintentional changes could cause issues for your system. So before you download any random registry key from anybody, um, make sure you know what you're doing. <laughs> make sure you have the ability to back up what's going to change. Um, this because I do want to continue. And the keys have been done. Let's go back into regedit. And you can see now it's back to 52. So that's how we do a backup of the registry. So um, again, I think the textbook will show you that. And that's all you gotta know is if you have to go in, you should have some sort of process either, either if you can't put it yourself, you really know the registry top to bottom. But a lot of times you can be giving it to, uh, give me, giving you a sort of a checklist or a process by provider. It could be again, you know, it's a hardware manufacturer, software um, developer, to say make these changes to, to make this your system work. And before you do that, now you know how to make a backup of it, just in case. So, power options. I'm just really going to brush over this. Um, power options themselves. There is something a BCD editor 
um, which is our boot configuration database. It's sort of hidden in registry. Um, you can do BCD edit in your shell. So I said the shell, let's talk about the shell. What is the shell? So uh, if we look at our Windows, Administrative Tools, or is in our accessories, and I really hate this thing sometimes. Oh, it just reg that right there. Um, I think it's under accessories. We should have our command prompt. Windows system. There it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, right click on this. More. Runs administrator. So uh, if you plan to do any work that's administrative level base, um, you want to run your command prompt as administrator. Again, yes. You notice it says Windows System 32. If I run this CMD, which you can do it here, if I run it as non administrator, you notice it dumps me out to my local user uh, path, which is user student in this case in this lab. So um, BCD. Edit. Um, you can see information here about the VCD, the boot configuration database, and you can actually do changes with it here. Um, in this case, it's uh, the path itself for the boot EFI manager, which is this UFI, uh, which we talked about week one, which is our BIOS. And you can see it with Windows 10, description, and so on. We'll come back to this in a second. There's another place you can, you can also load this and see it. Honestly, I have never in my 20 more years of IT experience working in all kinds of roles had to make a change to my PCD. So again, you should have some sort of guidance in place if you need to do this. And we'll look at some more how you can look at the different boot options. Uh, system properties for my modifying startup. So, uh, Let's look at a tool here. I'm actually jumping ahead here called msconfig. So msconfig. We're going to come to this again in a later slide into a specific part of it. I do want to show you this right here is startup and boot. There you go. So there's your advanced options. Um, number of processors. You can lock down processors. Again, never done this. You could do here probably do is a minimal boot. Um, and if you have uh, multiple operating systems, which I've never seen that before in Windows, you, but you can have multiple, I guess, OS's. Um, but you can set debugging for failure. It's probably the one place you want to do this here. Uh, safe boot or boot login itself. That's probably the one step you would use MS uh, config boot tab options here is uh, if you're having some weird problems and you think something happens during boot, you can set boot login. So, or debugging information. So again, it's one thing. We'll come back to this in a second here. MS config. So I'm gonna close it for now. We'll definitely come back to it though. It is a pretty awesome tool. Device drivers. All right. So we may mention this before, but we'll look at it again. Device drivers. Um, a device driver itself is, and this is back to week one. Uh, on our system itself, again, we have our, our, our kernel, which will make like a brain here, right? So we're like a brain. We have our kernel. Uh, again, it has a lot of low-level functions working with things like CPU, RAM, and so on. But also has to deal with hardware other than that, right? Uh, we have our video card, our sound card. We have a printer. It could be a printer or a multifunctional device. And these have more to them than what the kernel itself can do. So the kernel has some called low level drivers. It's like it can boot into like a, do a basic print job. It can boot and do basic sound or do a basic video output. Um, but to really sort of get all, everything from this, we need to have something called a device driver which is a small piece of sort of software you would install and it in turn tells the kernel how to talk to 
your multifunctional device. So how to do print and scan. So how to actually call and get a scan from that or how to do more advanced sound card stuff or even more um, our device driver here. This is supposed to be a D, our device driver for our video card, our video, video driver. How to push a video driver to do high-end gaming, graphics, maybe for work, uh, multi-core um, for the uh, virtual cores, I'm sorry, sorry, for the um, the GPU cores for things like maybe cracking passwords, things like that. So, so again, um, these drivers are usually installed from a third party, so they are signed, which means Microsoft has sort of given the nod to them. Unsigned is a driver someone else has either modified or changed. Um, newer operating systems will not install, there's probably ways around it, will not install unsigned drivers. So, so that's for security reasons. Talked about already. Again, our device is a lot like us. This Canon MX 920 would use a device driver to help you get everything from it. So how can we see device drivers? So again, we have our settings page. We talked about in our Windows 10 lecture. We can see devices here. Um, but what I want to show you is probably, yeah, skip over this. We're going to go to search here, type in um, device manager, which you can also launch from control panel and launch from some other, other areas too. Device manager. So here we can see information about properties, our driver itself, our driver version, and the driver details, which would be like the driver file. So in this case, the .sys file for our uh, monitor here is under look, Windows System 32. So there's that, there's that directory again. Also, you can roll back, you can do an update. Update driver should go out to the internet automatically. It will search, or you can tell it to look at your computer. Maybe you downloaded a local driver file. Um, you can roll back. If you actually um, update a driver, you should be able to roll back to the previous driver, which is nice if you have any issues. So device manager. So regedit, device manager. Device manager are our two main tools here so far. Um, we do have this thing here. I think I briefly cover this. I'll just do a couple of slides here. You can do a special startup repair. Um, in Windows 7, it's like a hotkey combination. I think it's like F7 or something like that, and you get this uh, advanced boot. But with Windows 10 and 8, um, there's actually a hotkey for it, and you touch on off and use Windows. Um, Windows 10 safe mode is self. And it's odd to do this, but if you go in your settings, I guess you're having some issues with your system right now. And you want to restart it, you want to get to that this next step, which is to do a check. Um, we can look at um, update recovery options issue and take us there. So advanced system startup here. So restart now. So again, that was under uh, recovery options. Here we go. So troubleshoot your PC. So again, um, Settings, look for recovery, and you can do start now. And you can do advanced options. Here we go. So what we saw here before in Windows 7 uh, is really here in Windows 10 too. Safe mode, start repair, and so on. Probably the one thing I have used on my Windows 10 system um, is start repair. So if you have some issues with Windows, um, Start repair is what you want. Windows 10 should be able to de detect any issues upon startup and take you here automatically if you come from a cold boot. If not, I believe you should do uh, four to hit the safe mode. Again, I'm looking at my Windows 10 documentation. Again, check the current Windows 10 um, documentation with Microsoft before doing this. Um, again, you can do system restore, uh, get a command prompt, uh, change your settings here too. You run start repair, which is going to go through, and start repair is probably going to be your first stop. It's going to go through, it's going to do basically system checks, it's going to verify you have the, the right kind of drivers in place, registry is, isn't mucked up, things like that. So, um, of course, the last thing is um, reinstall Windows. <laughs> I mean, 
There's refresh windows, which should keep your files in place. Again, have a backup. I can't say it's enough. You want to have a backup in place. Um, don't rely upon Windows not wiping your system out um, because you might end up doing a reinstall Windows fresh, which is going to wipe everything out. So again, this is different levels of recovery here. Um, all right, so let the thing start up here. It's going to diagnose it. And we'll let that finish here. So again, uh, check your, um, all right, whatever. Back to advanced options. Might need to restart another lab. <laughs> Give me the magic of editing here. We'll come back in a second. Let's see here, all right. All right, should we power back on? So again, hopefully we get a good, a good Windows 10 uh, start up here. Um, so again, M uh, regedit, MS config, we'll come back to that in a second. Regedit device manager, uh, definitely two things you wanna use. Uh, of course, settings is gonna be definitely something you wanna look at. Uh, also for devices and settings, little search for recovery. And you can go ahead and uh, do a advanced boot to get some more, some recovery options. And then, then our last stop here, I think in our slide here in our demonstration is MS config, which I did run once. Um, MS config. Again, I talked about it before because you can get to boot options here. Um, before we talk about the startup options, so let's look at this, um, tools. This is actually pretty handy. Even if you run MS config just to get to this screen, which I can't make any bigger, um, I can like run this about Windows. So I get my actual uh, OS build, is the exact build number too, version and build, 1903. Uh, this can be very handy when troubleshooting because sometimes different builds of Windows 10 can have different issues. UIC settings, um, maintenance, uh, computer management. Probably another good one here. I think we saw this already in previous ones. Um, things like Event Viewer, fantastic tool, uh, which is a way to see your logs, um, system logs, things like this. It can be used for further, for further troubleshooting. And then there's Event Viewer right there. It's a shortcutted system properties. So this is a great little way to dive in and see stuff like, well, you know, am I running? I'm running. How much memory do I have installed? What type of operating system am I running here? How many cores do I have? So again, you see control panel systems, uh, security system. So this is going to take you back to, again, we have ways to get to the same screen. And, and then, but nice thing about this is it's like a nice hub of things you might use for troubleshooting and so on. System restore. All right, so let's, let's launch that. Um, so before we get to system restore, let's talk about what are startup options here. Because I think it's our last thing, system restore. So you have a system maybe you have for a while, you have this uh, startup. Now in Windows 7, you will see something like this. And you can go in and actually see what's going to start when the computer starts. And sometimes when you install applications, it installs a little app that will launch with it. And it's good to every so often audit your system. Maybe you installed and uninstalled or left stuff installed and forgot about. Uh, some of this stuff could be garbage if not needed. Um, in Windows 10 though, we do this, it's in Task Manager. So here's an example right here. So you can see uh, VMware tools, I want that. Windows security notification looks pretty good. Um, maybe it's not, because I hate this, uh, it's gonna be annoying. But let's say this is a good example here, uh, OneDrive. Let's say you don't use OneDrive at all. I don't connect to OneDrive, I don't use it, so why should I have this start? So I can disable it. And now if I reboot my system, OneDrive will not start up. That's one less thing that needs to start, one less thing taking memory and making calls out over the, over the wire for no reason at all. So uh, it's a good way to optimize your system. 
also troubleshoot it. If I think this is causing a problem, I can disable it, reboot the computer, come back to it, and see if that was the issue. If it's not, I can re-enable it. So great way to troubleshoot stuff here. Now again, this actually launches into Task Manager, um, which is another one. You can right-click the Task Manager, Control Delete the Task Manager. Uh, this is a great one-stop shop also, which if you first launch it, you'll see this. Um, more details. You can trim down and see what's going on. What's the performance? Um, what starts up? Who's, used, who's logged in? And what are they running? Um, and processes. And you can sort by CPU here. See what's taking up all the memory. So if something's spinning and causing a lot of issues, what is it? And of course, if it's an issue, uh, right click on it. You can try to end the task or we'll get, we'll get more information. Go file full, 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 full file details and so on. Open the file location. So you can see where this stuff is installed. Um, there's a lot of ways you can use Task Manager, as well as, uh, and it should be here, it's in our tools in MS Config. You can launch that also. So Task Manager, MS Config, Startup. So again, a great way to go in and go and uh, sort of audit your system or disable items you don't need anymore. Best way would be in this case let's for Snagit here on the slide. If I don't have Snagit, I should just uninstall Snagit, and it should remove this entry. But if it doesn't for some reason, I can go in here and I can uh, disable it and or try to find the files where they're at and remove them. Uh, try to clean it out. Best thing is try to remove it from the uninstall application in your control panel or settings or uninstall it from the application itself. It has an uninstall feature. Um, but if it leaves something like this behind, you can definitely use this to disable that stuff. So uh, last thing I was talking about is create a checkpoint, system restore checkpoint. So before I do some major stuff, maybe, maybe I'm gonna install a brand new, uh, brand new video card, a different, different type of video card. Let's say I have an NVIDIA, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna get an AMD card or something. Or I'm gonna install a new sound card, you know, something, a major change in my system that's going to involve all new drivers. And I want to make sure I have my system backed up in case I want to go back to the previous setting. So system restore, which we saw from that um, restore boot, you can actually roll back a system restore. So first off, um, we need to turn on system protection. So this might be on by default in your own home system. Uh, this is might be a setting uh, that comes with the virtual machine uh, configure. I'm going to turn this on, then OK. So now if I launch System Restore, uh, whoops, let's actually give some space, huh? There we go. So create a System Restore point. So I'm going to call this one um, Dr. Mike, test one. And it's going to basically take a snapshot of the registry. I mean, if I do, if I do system restore from here, then you can see it. Um, and there's further stuff here you can look into, scan for effective programs, things like that. Um, again, this is a huge deal, but it's a great way to sort of create a checkpoint in time. So beyond just creating this uh, registry key for a single key, let's say I have a full backup. Well, if I do this full backup, I'm just going to put that in recycle bin. I definitely suggest do a system restore because this is going to take snapshots of drivers, um, registry, things like that. So um, I totally skipped over the device manager stuff here. There we go. We'll end that now. Uh, system restore, though, this will be on the system. And now even if we do that uh, F4 or that recovery boot, we can actually find the system restore and then load that. So um, before I do a major system change, maybe I'll do one of these. Or even a good idea is, let's say right now everything's great. Everything's running fine. I might just create one and call it like, you know, snapshot one, just to have one on store. Uh, unless I have issues like disk space being low. Uh, these do take up a little bit of disk space, but uh, disk space should not be a premium. Um, have one of these in your system at least of a known good state and maybe six months on the road something just goes bad you can roll back to this again and this is not big for your files this is just for 
uh, registry, drivers, things like that, system configuration. So let's click on that and see what it does. So anyways, um, yeah, nothing detected. I wonder if I actually do a reg edit, we'll detect it. Let's see. Let's go back to this RNG. Let's change this. To zero zero ff. All right, now let's see if it finds any changes. Probably not. Yeah, these are programs that were last added since the restore point. So okay. So again, I'm um, not gonna recover that, but that's system recovery. That's under system properties, and this could be seen again, probably from control panel. Go to control panel, search system properties. Here and you also can see things like you know, your uh, work group you're on, which I believe is gone now. In the current version of Windows 10, there's no longer work groups anymore. Uh, your computer name, your network ID. Again, you can launch device manager, uh, installation settings. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to do any of this stuff here. Uh, advanced start recovery. Voila, not never name. We saw this before too in MS config. Uh, if need be, we can do a um, memory dump. We can change our default OS. So you can see again, um, there are several ways to get to the same point. Um, control panel, system settings, but even better, MS config. Uh, so I like this myself because this is a great place. I can just launch everything I need from here. So. I think I got everything here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, MS Config, RegEdit, Device Manager, uh, Settings, Control Panel, and of course, probably the last thing, and probably the first thing you do when you have issues, Task Manager, um, which again, when you launch it, it's gonna look like this. Uh, your first stop for to see what's going on with my system. And in here, start up to see things I can maybe disable. Um, I don't need any more in this case, OneDrive, so. So that should cover most of the bits I want to talk about. Um, the textbook itself goes into some power options I didn't talk about. Look at the textbook for that, like uh, different power states and so on. Um, and also it's going to get into a little more information about the registry. If you look at that, and I might give you more information about the recovery tools. Um, again, that's chapter six though. And that should wrap up chapter six for this week. And I, I am out. <laughs> All right, thanks.